But when CBS Morning News called St. Elsewhere a surefire hit, who are we to argue? See what they're all talking about St. Elsewhere one week from tonight on NBC. Tomorrow from 2 to 5 p.m., Babyland General Hospital's doctor is giving free checkups for your adopted baby during the fifth anniversary five-day celebration at the Little House. Join the hundreds of people gathered for Family Day 82 on Sunday, November the 7th. Bible school at 9 a.m., worship at 1015. Family Day 82 at the Highland Church of Christ at Carriage Hills. Wallpaper Works opens this week, and the key word is discounts. Every day on wallpaper, mini blinds, drapery fabric, and brass hardware. No matter what your style, Wallpaper Works, 1700 Norman Bridge Road. WSFA, TV 12, Montgomery. Decision 82, the Alabama vote, is brought to you in part by WIGC-FM Radio, FM 106. Welcome into God's country. First Montgomery Bank, people serving people. Anders Bookstore, the superstore in Auburn, and Heinold Commodities, professionals in futures. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to Decision 82, the Alabama vote. I'm Bob Howell, along with my colleague Bob Ingram, to bring you the very latest in the returns in the governor's race this evening. As you can see, George Wallace is a man to be reckoned with this evening. The latest vote totals, as they have been counted from across the state, show that George Wallace is still a commanding leader in the two-man race with Republican Emory Falmer. The, the vote spread now is about 102,000 votes. We'll be getting back and showing you those totals in just a moment. Uh, well, Bob Ingram, uh, we've had a couple of, uh, about 20 minutes now to sit and think about all of this. Uh, uh, reflect upon some of the Montgomery voting areas and tell us what, uh, what this means as far as uh, uh, the vote uh, along uh, black and white lines, as you said earlier. Well, it's going, uh, Bob. I've got uh, final votes here from uh, two distinctly different uh, precincts in Montgomery, the Cloverdale Community Center, which is predominantly white and rather Republican, and then Newtown Community Center, which is predominantly black, and it goes about the way we would expect it to go. In Cloverdale, Emory Farmer beat George Wallace by a huge margin, 2,708 votes to 601, uh, uh, almost identical vote for Dickinson and Camp, 2,705 votes for the Republican incumbent Dickinson, 629 for Camp. But then you flip over and look at the Newtown Community Center vote, and you've got Wallace beating Farmer, 1,148 to 337. Billy Joe Camp defeating Dickinson, 930 to 417. So it's following a pattern that we certainly anticipated it would, that Emory Farmer would run very strong in the predominantly white, more affluent boxes of Montgomery. Uh, but in the black section of the uh, parts of town, he is being destroyed by George Wallace, as was expected. Okay, now let's look at uh, the latest uh, results that we have in the race for Congress in the 2nd District. Uh, we have been watching this very closely as a former George Wallace uh, press secretary and political aide, Billy Joe Camp, has been uh, doing battle with the, what is it, eight-term, uh, or is it nine-term now? How about, uh, he will be going running for, the for tenth. his tenth, yes. yes sir. <laughs> so he's, he's been in for nine terms, and of course yes, we're sir. speaking of Bill Dickinson, the man that went in in 1964 in the, the Barry Goldwater election that yes, year. Yes, sir. Well, uh, Dickinson has his hands full tonight. Hands full tonight. Uh, Billy Joe Kemp uh, is still holding on to a lead. It's about 29,000 to 26,000. Uh, don't tell me. Ask me the percentages. Roughly 53 to 47, I believe. Something like You're that. You're exactly right. Uh, but it's, uh, they're going to have a barn burner. Uh, I have said before, and I will say again, the Dothan vote, the Montgomery City vote uh, is going to make this a very, very close race. I suspect a little closer than Dickinson had hoped for. You know, maybe some indication of the closeness of this race uh, came about earlier when Bill Dickinson started uh, one of the most massive advertising campaigns, I guess, that he has put out in, in years. Because even back in 1976, I believe it was, with Carol Cahey, when uh, uh, she ran as a Democrat against mm -hmm. him and made a, uh, a pretty good showing, yes, I, I believe did. it was a 60, about a 60 40 split there. Right. Uh, yeah, there was not that type of advertising. Uh, but now we have seen spot after spot, day after day, ads in the newspapers, on the radio for Bill Dickinson. So he must have felt that this was going to be a close race. Well, I, uh, I have talked to Bill uh, uh, about the race and, uh, and to Mr. Camp as well. And I think uh, both of them saw that uh, it was going to be a, a battle right down to the wire. Uh, Billy Joe Camp uh, went in with uh, a plus, several pluses that the other people who have taken on Dickinson didn't have. Great name recognition, uh, having served on the Public Service Commission. Very close ties to... 
George Wallace, uh, eight years as press secretary and aide, and uh, the high profile from being on the Public Service Commission, the black endorsement, uh, all of these factors uh, were clear signs to Bill Dickinson that he better spend what money he had, <laughs> and he has. Let's look at the board now, and as you can see, uh, Bob was right on the numbers when he said Billy Joe Camp, 29,690. That's 53% of the votes counted. Bill Dickinson with 26,387, or roughly 47%. And as you can see, those numbers right on top reflect the latest totals in the governor's race. George Wallace, 301,601 votes. Emory Falmer, 190,745. Let's go live now to the George Wallace campaign headquarters on the Eastern Bypass in Montgomery. Chris Grimshaw. Chris? Bob, uh, there's a great deal of enthusiasm and mounting enthusiasm out here at Wallace headquarters, as uh, is probably obvious by the vote totals as they've been coming in so far. On an almost continuing basis, there is an announcement of vote returns, uh, both from the individual precincts and on a statewide basis. And with each announcement, there is a rather strong reaction from the crowd as you might imagine. The vote so far, uh, according to the talliers uh, here at the Wallace headquarters, as they put them up onto a rather large board keeping up with them, those are vote results coming in from county coordinators and officials in the probate judge's office across the state phoning them in to Wallace headquarters. And the vote counters have made a Ladies note that there has not been a single precinct that has reported a vote that has had Wallace behind. They say that he has led in all of the reports that have come in to the Wallace headquarters. With virtually every announcement in the uh, crowd, uh, there's some of that enthusiasm that is here with another one of those announcements. With the uh, lead that Mr. Wallace has so far, there is still no word as to when he might come out to campaign headquarters. The aides say that they are keeping in touch with his Montgomery home, trying to find out when he might uh, feel confident enough to come out here and uh, perhaps assume uh, some type of uh, claim of victory during this uh, election this evening. The former three-time governor has had a surprising lead across all of the state. Uh, I say surprising because some of his aides have said that they thought it would be close in some of the metropolitan areas, but the results coming in from those metropolitan areas to this, this, uh, ca this campaign headquarters has shown a uh, lead for Mr. Wallace, and we'll keep uh, in touch with what they're doing out here at Wallace headquarters. Bob? Thanks very much, Chris. We will be going back uh, to Chris throughout the evening to find out more about the, uh, the happy times at the George Wallace headquarters. And indeed, that probably will be the case throughout the evening if the vote totals continue as they are. Dennis Latham of our staff is the man who has been covering the Emory Falmer campaign uh, since the primary. And uh, Dennis right now is standing by with a live report from the Governor's House Motel. Uh, Dennis, uh, are the Falmer people disappointed right now? I didn't, don't think so, Bob. I think most of the Falmer supporters are still taking a wait-and-see attitude. And, of course, the answer you get from them when you ask about being disappointed over vote totals, they say, but the big urban areas haven't come in yet. They're counting rural votes. Uh, even as the totals continue to come in, they're still watching very closely what happens. Tom Coker, uh, since we last talked to you, uh, the votes have more have come in. We have about 300,000 from Mr. Wallace, about uh, 100,000, uh, rather, about 200,000 for Mr. Falmer. Uh, are you still continuing to stick with your projection that you'll get more as the urban votes come in? I certainly think so. I think we'll get a lot more votes. I think that the uh, uh, rural votes are just now coming in. We're about to get those over with, and I think we'll start running real strong in the next few minutes. Where will these come from? Well, of course, I don't know that the totals in there from Montgomery or Mobile or Birmingham or uh, Shelby County or extreme north Alabama, but we feel like we're going to close the gap considerably in just the very next few minutes. Now, Mayor Falmer has been in and out of the headquarters here several times this evening. That's a little unusual for a political race. The candidate usually stays in a room somewhere or at home, if this is his home, to watch the election returns until such time he either concedes or claims victory. Why is Mr. Falmer being so uh, public? Well, you know, Emory Falmer is uh, sort of an unorthodox candidate. Emory Falmer believes in being with his people. He believes in saying what he thinks, and uh, he doesn't have any, uh, there's nothing uh, fraudulent about Emory Falmer. He's right there out front for everybody to see him, and uh, uh, that's the way he is here tonight. He's not going to hide just because we're not doing so well this early. Now, NBC has projected Mr. Wallace as the winner. How do you see the validity of the, that projection? Well, of course, I don't really see how they could project a winner uh, at something like 610 when most of the polls had didn't even close till 7 o'clock. Are your tracking polls continuing to, to tell you the news you want to hear? 
uh, tracking poles. Well, we don't have any tracking poles beyond last night. Thank you very much. Tom Coker, the campaign manager for Emory Farmer, will bring you more details from the Farmer headquarters at the Governor's House Motel later in the evening. Dennis Latham, WSFA-TV News. Thank you very much, Dennis. We look forward to going back and finding out uh, more from the Farmer headquarters. We'll be back with more on Decision 82, the Alabama vote in a moment. Stay with us. Creative Leasing knows that an original design of anything is always worth more. To achieve, it takes talent and experience. Leasing vehicles is all we do. That means you can trust us to get the most for your transportation dollar. Whether you lease one vehicle or a hundred, we can design the perfect plan to meet your individual needs. Just tell us what you want, what you want on it, and we'll put you on the road with all the financial advantages. Your transportation needs are too important to leave to amateurs. Call Creative Leasing today. Hello, I'm Ted Turner, reminding listeners to stay tuned for the CNN Radio News Network on WIGC FM 106. The station with the most complete world and national news reports you'll find on your radio dial. WIGC FM 106 is Alabama's only 100,000 watt Tall Tower FM station for the best in country music. Travel with Tall Tower Country Radio, FM 106. Welcome into God's country and WIGC FM. Christmas at Parisian will be out of this world. We're back again. Let's take a look now at the latest numbers in the governor's race. And George Wallace is the man who is still way out in front over Republican Emory Falmer. Latest vote totals, 317,402 votes for George Wallace, 202,534 votes. And here at 12 minutes uh, past the hour of 8 o'clock in the evening, that's quite a few numbers, Bob Ingram, to be reporting uh, this early on. It's, uh, of course, we have just uh, statewide, just this race that everybody's counting in a hurry, and we anticipated that the returns would be coming in a great deal faster tonight than the previous nights when they were so slow. What was the percentage of that vote? I'm curious. Uh, how many boxes have been counted? That was 40% uh, of the boxes were And that's a half a million votes. Right. Now, admittedly, boxes and votes, we've talked about this before, don't jive, but what it appears is we have had a massive voter turnout today. Absolutely. We may set a, uh, an all-time record for a state race. I 1970 don't think we was the last time that we had a huge turnout, right? Well, we had a, around a million uh, four years ago, but I suspect that uh, uh, we're going to we'll have more votes cast in this governor's race than any governor's race in Alabama's history. We may not break the Reagan-Carter record, but uh, we may do that. Uh, it's incredible, the turnout we've had today. Uh, really. And we, uh, uh, people will be speculating on what brought them out because I personally didn't think the campaign was all that exciting. Not as exciting as some, but it maybe it was. It was television advertising. Is that what it was? Oh, Absolutely. It pays to advertise. <laughs> all right. But whatever, they have poured out and voted today. Incidentally, let me, dig uh, let me spin off and talk. Uh, I've just gotten one box out of Montgomery to show you the awesome effectiveness of the ADC endorsement in some cases in, on Cleveland Avenue, at Cleveland Avenue Library, predominantly black. Listen to these numbers. George Wallace, 2,001 votes. Emory Farmer, 75. Billy Joe Kemp, 5, 1,850. Bill Dickinson, 122. Some of the, uh, the Republican candidates out of 2,000 votes are getting 29, 35. Total votes. It's awesome. This, is a, this is, explains why some of these guys are winning by such massive margins. It's an, they delivered the vote today. We've had a number of calls also from people who are looking for totals in the local races. We're working on those right now. We'll have them just as soon as possible. We're uh, tabulating some of the calls that are coming in. Uh, I can throw something out. In, uh, in Cloverdale, in a very interesting house race uh, between Ham Wilson, Jr., Perry Hooper, Jr., it's just nip and tuck, but again, uh, Cleveland Avenue Fire Station, Cleveland Avenue Library. Uh, Wilson is carrying it by those same margins of probably 16 or 1,700 to about 50. So I would suspect that that will be awfully hard for the Republican Hooper to overcome. Anti-Republican. Uh, yes. Absolutely. And uh, th that could almost be the battle of the yard signs. Yes, sir. In that Montgomery. Well, we call it the junior race because <laughs> right. the four in the, in the primaries were all juniors, and then we had two juniors, obviously, in the 
in the in the battle today, and uh, it looks like uh, Junior Wilson is uh, right now is taking uh, taking the measure of Junior Hooper, uh, the Democrat over the Republican. Yes, sir. Let's take a look at the board one more time now, if we could, to pick up on the totals in that congressional race. The second congressional race, Billy Joe Camp, 29,690, Bill Dickinson, 26,387. Earlier this evening, Matt Carmack had uh, a chance to visit at the, uh, uh, the headquarters of Billy Joe Camp, and he has this taped report. Supporters are beginning to gather now at Billy Joe Camp, uh, I guess you would call it a victory party at the Diplomat Inn, and Mr. Camp is with us tonight. Uh, Mr. Camp, how do you feel so far? We've seen uh, the totals vary a little bit since the early returns and as it stands right now. Well, Mike, we're uh, cautiously optimistic, of course. We've got, uh, looks like, uh, well, 38,000, 39,000 votes in, and we've got what appears to be a 24, 2,400 vote lead. And that makes us feel good at this time. We know it's early, and uh, we just appreciate the uh, fine reception that the people through the district gave us uh, we were into a lot of homes and a lot of businesses and the farms and uh, the towns and the rural areas as well. So uh, we're very optimistic. We'll have to wait and see what the final outcome is, but uh, we're just thankful to God that we're where we are at this time and hoping for good news throughout the night. Seems like most of your supporters have gathered around the television set, and we, we hear some good gasp of uh, pleasure when some totals show that you're in the lead right now, and uh, it seems like most people are holding back a little bit, though. Does that seem to be your attitude? Well, uh, yes, uh, and that's, that's my own uh, reaction at this time. You know, uh, we realize that there are 13 counties here, and uh, uh, Montgomery is a very crucial county. Uh, we're hoping for a, a good vote in Montgomery County. Uh, Houston County is a very crucial county. Uh, all of them are, but uh, we know that those two are the heavy populated uh, counties. So um, we're waiting and watching and hoping and praying that the, uh, that the lead there holds up. Uh, as we watch it off television set, of course, we have no real idea as to where the votes uh, come from. But uh, I feel like that this is a, a good indication that this is it's going to be a close race. Then uh, I think we've got a good chance of winning it. All right, we're going to stay right here and watch your reaction. We'll Thank be you. here. We'll be back later on from Billy Joe Camp's campaign dinner or campaign uh, celebration at the Diplomat Inn. Our campaign headquarters, Mac. As we were giving you the introduction to that taped story, the numbers changed in the Billy Joe Camp and Bill Dickinson race. We're down to a margin now of only 487 votes separating the two candidates. Billy Joe Camp still out in front, 43,869 votes. Bill Dickinson, 43,382. Again, as we said, a margin of less than 500 votes now separating uh, the two candidates. That's with 53% of the boxes reporting. We'll be back with more on Decision 82, the Alabama vote in a moment. Stay with us. Nothing comes from nothing, and it takes money to make money. A.G. Edwards understands money, your money, and what it takes to make more money. A.G. Edwards, established in 1887, has over 200 offices nationwide, a strong team of committed investment brokers with knowledge of financial products, and an investment direction for stocks, bonds, estate planning, and more. Why should you invest? The reasons will vary. It's just important that you do with A.G. Edwards. A.G. Edwards, money making money. Member SIPC. Discover Gapers for yourself. Discover the savings at Gapers. You'll save on a special group of Gapers' finest fall flannels. Panther, Villager, and JH Collectibles, up to 40% off. Choose from blouses, sweaters, blazers, suit jackets, pants, and skirts at tremendous savings. And Gapers has a special group of shirts and sweaters by J.G. Hook at $29.99 and $39.99. Discover Gapers for yourself. Once a master carpenter worked with divine tools, creating gifts of love, joy, and hope. His simple touch could mend a broken heart or repair a soul. For any who would ask, he carved an individual purpose in life that produced a deep inner peace, at no cost. This carpenter is still smoothing out personal frustration for all who put faith in his work. To ask him for help should be easy enough. The hard part is already over. Might note that during the last commercial break, one of our directors, James Belton, brought me a calculator out here so we wouldn't have any more faux pas on uh, trying to... I can think of no one to... who needs it more. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, pal. Yes, sir. Right. Uh, 
we have uh, more totals in to talk about this evening. And uh, uh, the Associated Press is also electing Annie Laurie Gunter, by the way, in the Democratic race for state treasurer. I think uh, that's a safe projection yes. on their part. She was, the vote? Uh, there was no vote total. I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> they just simply said she was elected. <laughs> but uh, she was the, the top vote getter as far as the percentage yes. of votes in the, uh, in the Democratic uh, primary. Well, of course, any number are, are being elected tonight officially. Uh, uh, C.C. Torbett, Bo Torbett, uh, unopposed, is being officially elected. Uh, the history-making uh, election, uh, Justice Oscar Adams is being elected officially tonight. Uh, uh, the first black ever to be elected to a statewide office in Alabama. Uh, oh, a long list of, uh, of court uh, members are being elected without opposition tonight. Right, and uh, uh, we also have a word in on the state auditor's race. Again, it is uh, Jan Cook running against many peoples, right. a candidate from North Alabama, and that is uh, no contest, 99% of the vote for Jan mm -hmm. Cook. That, again, was a, a close race back in the Democratic primary yes, also. Yes, she had a, had a battle with several uh, strong candidates, but she came out rather well. Five women in the race. Uh, someone I've was, got uh, some votes here we, might, we have not even mentioned, Bob, and I think we ought to at least let them know what's happening to those three amendments of statewide import, uh, one, two, and three. Uh, all three are winning uh, handily. Uh, obviously, these are very early returns. They're counting the governor's race and not the amendments with about 5% counted amendment number one, which means that you will never again have to vote on all these local amendments that you don't like to vote on, is winning by 11,000 to 3,000. Amendment number two, which changes the way in which uh, judicial pay raises are approved in the legislature, is winning 8,000 to 5,000. And number three, which is the Help me, my mind, I've gone blank. Renovation of the Capitol. I'm sorry, of course. The renovation of the Capitol and giving the legislature the authority to determine where they will meet during that long four-year period is passing also 11,003. So a trend there obviously uh, set in, and those three apparently are headed for approval, as is number four. Chickens. Chickens. Right. Hens. Hens, right. specifically. Not, not chickens, hens, hens. only. <laughs> yes. Uh, laying hens? Laying hens. Laying hens, okay. Also, amendment number eight. Uh, was of interest to our viewers in the Bullock County area, which would uh, uh, maintain the uh, authority of a particular government agency over there, build a new jail, and drop the Reduce sales the tax. tax by one cent. Uh, I can only say that in Montgomery it is winning impressively in the boxes I've seen here. Now, statewide, we have no totals on that. And there were uh, quite a few people over in Bullock County who were actively supporting the passage of, uh, yes, sir. of Amendment uh, Number 8. I would suspect that... Uh, Historically, if you have popular amendments at the top of the ballot, as these three apparently are, then they will carry most of the locals to victory. And I, I suspect that the people of Bullock County will be happy when the returns are finally all in tomorrow Tra or the next day. Traditionally, amendments pass. Is that not correct? Uh, well, if the first two or three are popular. Yeah. Uh, we had one uh, years ago. There were about 30 on there, and it was a tax at the top that was very unpopular. And all the amendments were just wiped out because of number one, the so-called Goodwin Amendment. The late Joe Goodwin had sponsored this tax bill. But, uh, uh, Eons ago. Yes. Well, there's something that you and I talked about after the first, uh, the very first voting in the state. The fact that some people go into the ballot box or go into the to the voting machine, and they vote for governor and literally turn around and walk out of the uh, out of the voting machine because after the governor's race there was a significant decrease in the number of votes that were uh, cast for lieutenant governor, and it went steadily downhill from governor all the way down from a million three in the governor's race to 500,000 by the time you got down to an associate justice on the appeals yes, court. Yes, I remember that distinctly. I believe our, uh, our local candidate, Bishop Barron, uh, after, what, a little over a million votes cast in the governor's race on the very same ballot, he won in an election which less than uh, half a million were cast. So <clears throat> the voters do go in and hit two or three, maybe four or five, and then depart. And that's why the amendment vote will be far less today. Oh, it will be much less, probably a third of what will be voted in the governor's race. Okay, uh, fine. Very good. We'll be back with more on Decision 82, the Alabama votes, in just a moment. Now, Estee Lauder helps skin care become skin repair. Introducing her new night repair a cellular recovery complex that works every night to help speed the natural repair of cell damage from the day's ultraviolet light. Estee Lauder's new night repair. There has never been any beauty treatment like it. Use it and wake up to better looking skin. Night repair, available now at Gaper's. Alabamians have turned to WIGC-FM 106 and CNN Radio News during this very important election. Families around the state can depend on Alabama's most comprehensive news number, 
FM 106. CNN is only on WIGC-FM, Alabama's Information Center. CNN Radio News and FM 106 say welcome into God's country and WIGC-FM. Reuben Hannon and his penny profit store a Montgomery tradition. And so is that mysterious black powder he's sprinkling on these steaks. That black magic is a secret he won't even reveal to me or his wife. But I've eaten his steaks, and they're the best. I'm Barry Shan, pastor of the First Southern Baptist Church, Hope Hall, and I know something that's no secret. God loves you, and he wants to give you a better life. Allow God to sprinkle his mercy on you. Decision 82, the Alabama vote is brought to you in part by WIGC FM Radio, FM 106. Welcome into God's country. Alabama Farm Bureau, the best does cost less. Gaper's, the South's most exciting department store. And the Montgomery Area Transit System. You'll love a bus. Welcome back. I'm Bob Howell. Bob Ingram and I have been talking about, uh, and, and we're speaking strictly on a hypothetical situation, that this race in the second congressional district uh, has the potential for putting us in position to be without a public service commission president, which would mean uh, another uh, space to be filled. Yes, sir. Uh, the next governor would, uh, the terms of office uh, coincide with that of the uh, governor, I believe, so the next governor uh, would have the opportunity to appoint uh, the president of the Public Service Commission in the event uh, Mr. Camp should be win the election tonight. Right now, as we know, it's nip and tuck, and there's no certainty that he's going to win at all. It's, it's close. But, uh, of course, if he does win, uh, then the governor would appoint uh, his successor for the next two years. Uh, there's been some criticism, incidentally, Bob, in some quarters that uh, uh, is it cricket? And I'm not singling out Mr. Camp because he is certainly not the first to have done this. Uh, uh, for members of the Public Service Commission to be able to run for an office in midterm, and then if they lose, they can, they're right back where they were, and they've lost nothing other than a few months out of work, out campaigning, and they hold on to the job. Of course, if they win, then it's a vacancy. But the PSC is only staggered terms. Uh, two years ago, Jim Folsom, of course, ran in midterm for the U.S. Senate. Uh, countless times in the past, the president of the Public Service Commission uh, has run for governor because it it's in the middle of his term. Mm -hmm. uh, C.C. Jack Owen ran several times for governor while he was president of the Public Service Commission without success. Uh, some people feel that perhaps uh, the law might ought to be looked at and say, hey, if you're going to be elected to that office for four years, you should run, uh, sit in it, and if you decide to run for another office, vacate it. I doubt that will ever happen. But uh, Is that any different from a governor running for president in midterm? Uh, you could ask that of governors who run for president in midterm, that perhaps there isn't, mm -hmm. uh, uh, no difference in that. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's one of those few state offices where you are in that position where you can in midterm run for something else without right. giving it up. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, going back to your original point, uh, yes, uh, there would have to be an appointment in the event Mr. Camp is uh, elected to Congress. Uh, right now it's only 487 votes separating uh, yes, the two so, men. Uh, the possibility is very real that mm -hmm. that could happen. Uh, let's talk about something, uh, uh, two seats that are not being uh, up for grabs tonight. And, of course, we're talking about Alabama's two senatorial seats in the U.S. Senate. Howell Heflin will be up next. Jeremiah Denton will have another four more oh, yes. years. Uh, of course, uh, the next one is two years. Uh, Howell Heflin uh, will uh, be, uh, have to seek another term at that time, and uh, everything indicates he will run for re-election. All sorts of speculation on who among the Democrats might want to take on uh, Senator Heflin. Uh, it's been mentioned that uh, if Bob James ever staged a political comeback, that might be that would be the next race he could run in. That would be a logical one. I, uh, I'm not persuaded that he's going to do that, but it's a possibility. Uh, Don Siegel, uh, Siegelman has been mentioned as a possible candidate, if not against Heflin in two years, uh, against Denton, the Republican, in four years. But again, that's so far down the road, and who knows what young person might come up in the meantime and uh, whip them all. Mm -hmm. We just don't know. But uh, uh, in, uh, in Alabama, perhaps elsewhere, but in Alabama, uh, we never stop running. Uh, as soon as we get through tonight in the morning, 
the campaign for two years starts for somebody. I guarantee you, they'll especially be for the congressman. It, it really has they to have to run every two that's, years. That's what I'm saying. That that has to be a situation that puts you in uh, a, a difficult perspective because by the time that you get elected, you get to Washington, especially if you're a freshman and you just learn, you know, uh, where the men's room is, uh, then you got to start running all over again. That was the whole purpose, uh, the thought behind our, as you know, our founding fathers. They said, hey, we want to have one house of Congress that is exceedingly responsive to the people, and they made that the, the U.S. House. Mm -hmm. Make them run every two years, have to answer that often. The Senate, six years. They can go up there. And if you want to shudder, just think of this. Up until 1901, the governor of Alabama ran every two years. How would you like to do this every two years? <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's don't do that. I don't know if we're ready for that. I don't think I'm ready for it. You may be with your calculator. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Bob. Uh, Bob Ingram and I will be back coming up uh, after we rejoin NBC for uh, uh, the latest in national coverage. It'll be coming up at 8.52 when we will return. And when we do, we'll bring you live reports from Emory Falmer and George Wallace headquarters. Auburn Superstore, Ender's Bookstore, Book